Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Genesis Berlanga. I work with Dr. Thomas Bristow at NASA Ames Research Center, and uh, we use XRD spectroscopy to uh, better understand the surface of Mars. So in today's talk, uh, following the Martian waters, uh, the X-ray diffraction signature of perchlorates. So is there life on Mars? Well, to find that, we have to follow the water. Wherever there's water, the likelihood of discovering life as we know it increases. This naturally draws attention to finding fluvial features such as gullies, channels and streams, and surface ice such as glaciers or frozen lake beds. But uh, is there water on Mars? To find water, we have to follow the processes that reveal its presence. These surface features above leave imprints that allude to processes such as flowing water, crater flooding, and freezing lake beds. Here is a series of orbiter images taken of the steep edge of Newton Crater, Mars. It's by NASA's uh, High Rise Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Warm season and narrow dark flows called recurring slope lineae, or RSL, appear to extend away from this lighter toned uh, bedrock outcrop down steep 24 to 40 degree slopes and onto uh, the crater basin. RSL are often associated with streams and channels. The series spans from late spring through the summer of one Mars year. One Mars year is uh, two Earths here. So uh, this series is about 15 months or so. And repeat imaging shows the features that appear and incrementally grow during warm seasons and fade in the cold seasons. But the actual liquid water flow has never been confirmed as it happens. Mars's atmosphere is too thin and liquids sublimate within minutes on the surface. But the liquid is long gone in these images. Uh, we want to detect this as it occurs in order to confirm whether this really is water or liquid in general. One hypothesis for the origin of RSL is perchlorate deliquescence. So perchlorates are uh, found uh, all over the Mars surface and they go through the process of deliquescence. So what is deliquescence? Deliquescence is a water absorption process where perchlorate crystals act similarly to a sponge, absorbing more water weight than the original sponge weight. On Mars, the del deliquescence is a process by which uh, a substance such as magnesium perchlorate salts, pictured here, absorb moisture from the atmosphere until they dissolve in the absorbed water and form a clear solution. Perchlorate salts reduce the freezing temperature of water. This is important because it enables liquid brines to flow downhill under Mars conditions. Evidence for perchlorates is supported by multiple rovers on Mars, including NASA's Curiosity rover, which is currently on the surface of uh, Gale Crater. It is the latest of several Mars rovers that has been detected, uh, has detected between one to three weight percent perchlorates on the surface. Perchlorates are ubiquitous, um, making it important that we understand the spectral signature of perchlorate deliquescence in order to find any potential water quickly before it sublimates. So setting the scene, here's a topographical map of Mars. Here's Gale Crater. It's an ancient paleo lake in the Aeolus Basin. It's about 154 kilometers in diameter and about 3.5 billion years old. This is an old crater. The crater has a central mound called uh, Aeolus Mons. And Aeolus Palace is the plain here between the northern wall of Gale Crater and the northern uh, foothills of the central mound. This is the landing ellipse of Curiosity. Zooming in, we see Peace Vallis. It's a nearby outflow channel. Uh, it seems to have been carved by water flowing down from the hills to Aeolus Palace below, creating the Stiltaic fan and uh, transporting uh, materials that are eventually accumulated to this hematite ridge, clays, and sulfate units. These are rocks altered by water. So on October 2012, Curiosity detected perchlorates right here at the Rock Nest site. This is about a few hundred meters away from its original landing site. And Curiosity is currently traversing uh, up this orange line uh, towards the central mound. So one way to detect deliquescence and therefore the hydration state of the regolith or soil on Mars is by using X-ray diffraction or XRD. Uh, Curiosity carries the Kemen XRD and XRF instrument. It's uh, located uh, in the red box in the schematic of Curiosity. And if perchlorate species are present in large enough concentrations to form crystals, the instrument will be able to record a perchlorate pattern. 
I produced a signature with peaks corresponding to the crystal plane geometries. This is what the pattern uh, would look like for any hypothetical kind of mineral. We reproduced hypothetical Kenan measurements of perchlorate deliquescence of Mars analog soil using our Regaku Smart Lab X ray diffractometer, pictured up here, the upper right, and it's at NASA Ames Research Center. XRD patterns were collected across 15 days under Mars equatorial conditions down to negative 80 degrees Celsius and at, a, at 610 uh, pascals. So this is a fraction of Earth's atmospheric pressure. And uh, with relative humidities from a dry 0% to a wet 100%. The bottom left image here shows our sample within the Mars chamber. The sample's in the center with the thermal couple sticking out. And on the right, uh, we have the sealed chamber and it's all under Mars pressures at 610 pascals uh, with liquid nitrogen feeds attached through the bottom to uh, cool it down to that negative 80 degrees Celsius. We reproduced perchlorate deliquescence in the lab and measured its signature at every stage of hydration from dry to completely deliquesced. So on the left here, we have uh, two samples of MGS1C Mars analog powder mixed with magnesium perchlorate, pre-deliquescence. Uh, the sample was allowed to deliquesce under both Earth and Mars conditions. And this is what they looked like post-deliquescence. Briny water overflowed uh, the sides of the sample holder. This is the, the white stuff that you can see on the edge here. And the sample collapsed in on itself and, and looks brittle and a little bit shiny. And this happens after becoming wet and then drying back up under that Mars uh, atmosphere. So much of that liquid that it absorbed proceeded to sublimate. And this is a process that happens on Mars. So this XRD diffraction pattern of pure magnesium perchlorate shows complete deliquescence under Earth conditions. Two theta diffraction angles are on the x-axis here from 0 to 65 degrees, and these correspond to unique X-ray reflection angles from the sample surface. XRD reflection intensities are on the y-axis, and these correspond with well-formed crystalline surfaces emitting at higher intensities. So as deliquescence progresses, solid crystals dissolve into a liquid and crystallinity disappears. We see this as uh, the progression from the cooler colored uh, bluish peaks down to the warmer colored uh, orange and pink peaks, all the way to a flattened line. The flattened line is the uh, fully deliquesced sample. Key magnesium perchlorate diagnostic peaks are at 21.27, 22.68, 31.33, 33 33.85, 35.01. These diagnostic peaks are important to record because they're visible in Mars soil simulants with little to no peak overlap of any competing uh, mineral reflections. Here we have an expected Mars regolith XRD pattern. It has many peaks, looks uh, a little bit complicated. Uh, it includes several minerals like olivine, pyroxene, hematite, gypsum, calcite. And by anticipating the location of perchlorate peaks in such a pattern, we don't need to waste time deciphering their location. So here are our perchlorate peaks of interest, the same ones that we saw in the previous slide. And if these peaks start diminishing in intensity, we have likely captured the process of deliquescence and therefore liquid formation on the surface of Mars. So the takeaway here is uh, we can follow the water to establish past, present, or future habitability on Mars. We can follow the water through perchloric deliquescence. And if we can anticipate these signatures, we'll be ready to capture the formation and flow of liquid water as it happens before the evidence disappears in Mars' thin atmosphere. And with that, thank you for your time. And um, thank you to my mentor, Dr. Thomas Bristow and um, the BMSIS community for being so supportive and um, such a great family these last few years. Uh, I'd like to welcome any questions. Thank you, Genesis, very interesting. So cool and get to work with like the Marsh Mars Rover team. That's so, just so neat. Uh, any questions for Genesis? I feel very fortunate to be uh, with the Kenan team. It's, it's a dream. Genesis, is the process of deliquescence reversible? Is the process of deliquescence reversible? Uh, 
uh, yes, you uh, can bake a sample or you can sublimate it. So in this case, uh, the, the shiny uh, brittle samples that we saw at the end actually lost uh, the, all of the liquid and any uh, solid perchlorate that had dissolved in that solution returned to its powdery crystal form. Interesting. And so if, if perchlorates are ubiquitous on the surface of Mars, why is it only in the gullies that they actually deliquesce and cause you know, the RSLs? Shouldn't it just deliquesce everywhere on the surface, kind of universally? Well, uh, I guess uh, there are two ways to answer this. So what forms the gullies? Is it deliquescence and a triggering flow? Uh, triggering water flow through deliquescence, or um, or do the do perchlorates further the the uh, formation of gullies? Um, I don't think that has been answered. Um, for perchlorates to deliquesce, they need the right conditions, so the right temperature and pressure conditions and humidity. And uh, so I, I would guess it's much more likely for deliquescence to occur in equatorial regions where it's warmer uh, or uh, in areas, uh, darker regions of Mars where the regolith can sustain more heat. Um, we'd, we'd have to reach the activation energy for perchlorates for this to actually occur. Um, I suspect that the pulse is going to be very hard. Um, so we have gullies uh, close, uh, the location of most gullies is as close to um, the equator, but there are gullies that actually occur farther out from the equator. So is there a cause and effect relationship between them? I don't think we know. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, there are many theories for gully formation. It may not just be a uh, deliquescence, it could also be dry flows. So I don't know the answer to that. I don't think anyone does, but... Um, what are, if slope has to do something with it, like because they all happen on the south facing you know, wall of a crater. Right, right. Intriguing. Intriguing. Uh, Emily has a question for you uh, in the chat. So, so what leeches us can get back in? Uh, yes, that's the uh, well, genesis response. So what leeches out can get put back in? Uh, if it flows, it's in a different location. So I, I guess uh, it will, it, the perchlorate will revert to its original uh, crystallinity if it dries up, but it won't be in the same place. In fact, you might find it downstream. I have a follow-up question. Oh. Yep, go ahead, Feng. Hi, uh, nice talk. So uh, if perchloride was dissolved in water and then that uh, salty water flows out and after some time the water will uh, uh, sublimate, and uh, uh, did you say that uh, the perchloride will uh, crystallize again or uh, after that process? And if so, uh, will you be able to observe them? After you see some gully, will you be able to detect uh, perchloride uh, minerals uh, using your method? Uh, I believe so. Um, as long as, uh, so Curiosity, can, Kevin's instrument can only detect perchlorates down to about 1% weight percent. So as long as that concentration is high enough and it hits that one to three weight percent, then, and the perchlorate is able to recrystallize, then yes, it should be detectable. Uh, but but uh, you cannot use a, you, it's n uh, less likely to use a rover to detect those newly formed uh, perchloride minerals because of the location may be pretty far from your rover. Uh, what about a um, orbiter or anything else from the air? Will you be able to reach their level of accuracy or sensitivity that it, it would uh, be required. Thank you. I don't know the exact answer to that, but I do know that most of our perchloride evidence has been from the surface, from rovers, so I would suspect that maybe MRO, uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, uh, doesn't have that uh, sensitivity. Um, and I don't know if it has the right instruments to um, detect uh, perchlorates on the surface. Uh, maybe an infrared, but I, I'm not sure. Um, my suspicion would be uh, the abundance is so low that only rovers can really see it to date. Maybe we'll have more sensitive instruments in orbit in the future. 
Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Sanjay, you asked a question uh, about the detectability. I, I, was, I was wondering if uh, uh, perchloride was just uh, covered up by dust in other places so that they cannot be detected from the space, from orbiter. But if they are newly formed, maybe uh, the orbiter can detect them. Just a thought. That's a good thought. It doesn't take much dust to hide uh, what's on the surface from, or from orbital measurements, that's for sure. And, and actually, uh, I, I know um, there's some studies that are following um, perchlorate and chloride and any kind of chloride material um, as a, uh, out, a volcanic outgassing or a magmatic outgassing through the crust. So there might be a lot of perchlorate in the subsurface that we don't know about. So it'd be pretty cool if, uh, if uh, a lot of that leaching or a lot of what we see on the surface actually comes from the subsurface and there's just this massive reservoir underneath. Very cool. Yeah, Mars is fascinating for processes. It looks so similar to Earth, but yet it's so different. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, thank you, Genesis, for a beautiful presentation. Thank you.